Hello, we'd like to thank you for joining us here at Living Epistle Facebook Live, our Bible study, a weekly Bible study that we do every Wednesday for one hour. We'd like to thank you for joining us here on tonight. I want to open up with a word of prayer. So if you will, wherever you are, if you would just bow your heads with us in a moment of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you here and now, we thank you, God, for this time and this opportunity to get into your word. I ask that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds, God, and help us comprehend and understand what your word is sharing to us on tonight. And Father, we give your name the praise, the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 This, is my Bible, this is my Bible. The Holy Word of God. The Holy Word of God. It is my food. It is my food. Water, water, light, light strength, strength, and final authority. And final authority. Through, it, Through it, I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed and, reconciled and reconciled unto God. Now, now as, I God, as I hear the Word of God, faith will come. Faith will come. Through, faith, Through faith, salvation is mine. Salvation is Through, faith, Through faith, healing is mine. Healing. Through faith, through faith, deliverance is mine. Deliverance is through, faith, through faith, prosperity is mine. Prosperity all, of is all of God's blessings, all of God's blessings, all of God's blessings, they are mine. We are continuing our study on the capabilities of God's word. And we began last week, amen, in the uh, book of Psalm 119. Now, <clears throat> I did, or at least my wife did a little research and I did a little as well, in reference to the authorship of Psalm. And what I have found out is that not just one author is responsible for some. There yeah. are many <clears throat> various and different authors, but it all has been compiled together. And on tonight, we're going to, again, pick up where we left off last week in reference to Psalms 119. This is the longest chapter in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Psalms 119. And I mentioned to you last week that it is divided up into stanzas or it has been broken up according to the Hebrew alphabet. And there are 22 letters in the alphabet. Now, their alphabets are different than what we know alphabets in English. But nevertheless, again, depending on your Bible, you may have it designated and broken up into those various and different stanzas. And at the very top, it will have uh, what it refers to as the alphabet. You know, they used to say division. They used to put that. I know we were growing up. We used to say the uh, 15th division of Psalms. I, I really? Mean, yeah, you said stanzas, uh, but we used to say division. Okay, in uh, this, okay. And then the author for this one is known as David. Okay. David is known as the author All right. for this one. The 19th. All right. 119. All right. All right. Well, we got it. So with that said, let's begin, amen, at the 33rd verse. So he says, teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. And again, like I mentioned last week, I want you to either highlight, pay attention to the words that will make reference back to God's word or God's standard, amen, mentioned in his word. He says, teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. And he says, and I shall keep it unto the end. The end of what? The end of my days. When you make a commitment to God, he's expecting you to keep me, excuse me, to keep that commitment unto the end. But let's go on. He says the 34th verse, give me understanding. Now we, you know, throughout our lives, we, we want understanding. I think uh, there's a scripture that talks about in all that getting, get what? And understanding. understanding. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we, <clears throat> especially us as believers, that we get an understanding of God's word. Because if we do not get an understanding, that leaves room for the enemy of our faith to come in and cause confusion and misunderstanding. And therefore, we can miss out on something because we have a misunderstanding and everything. And then when we miss something, we're blaming on God. <laughs> yeah. You know, believe it or not, the way the gospel works, the good news, is that each one of us individually has to get an understanding of some area. You have to understand it for yourself, faith. You've got to. Yeah. In order to get it to work. Amen. You, you, you must. It is so important. Mm -hmm. He says, give me understanding. He <clears throat> says, and I shall keep thy law. Because when I understand the benefits, mm -hmm. when I understand your standard, I understand who you are. I understand that your word, you keep your word. When I understand just these small things about your word, he says here, and I shall keep 
thy law, another reference to the word. He says, yea, I shall observe it, meaning I will do it with my whole heart. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go off, you know, half-hearted, a quarter of my heart. He says, I'm going to do with my whole heart. And when someone does something with their whole heart, they're putting all of themselves into it. Mm -hmm. you, you remember in school, like if there was a math problem and you had to copy off of somebody, you had to keep coming back to them because you really didn't understand anything. You know, well, how, what'd you get for this answer? What'd you get for this? It's like, learn how to do it yourself. So you're being answered just. See, I would be like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and that means I got to depend on you all the time. Yes. So, but when I get it and really get a full understanding of it, I can do it myself and Amen. enjoy that math problem. <laughs> yes, yes. And, 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 and that makes so much sense. <clears throat> All right, uh, what did I stop Third off at? He, he says, make me to go in the path of thy commandments. Again, another reference to the word. He says, for therein do I delight, or I find joy, or I find happiness, or I find peace. Where at? In your word. And again, this is why it is important for you as a believer to get an understanding so that you can have delight, joy, understanding in God's word. Don't you delight in his word? Oh, yes, I do. I do too. I When I wake up, that's the first thing on my mind. It's like, <laughs> where's my Bible? Or, you know, I got to get something. I don't know. It's just, that's what it is to me. It's Amen. a delight in it. Amen. It is. It is. I mean, when I'm reading or when I'm listening to it as I'm going to work, listening to a message or teaching and all like that, I'm able to find comfort. I'm able to find delight. I'm able to, to hear something that is going to encourage me and build me up in spite of what else is going on. Mm -hmm. No matter what I'm going to encounter, the word, excuse me, I'm able to find delight there. 36 verses, incline my heart unto thy testimony incline or motivate my heart towards, he says, unto your word or to testimonies and not to covetousness. I don't want to be able to, uh, uh, to, to useless. Matter of fact, <laughs> earlier I was going through my complete Jewish study Bible. Uh, it's uh, insights for Jews and Christians. I want, I want to go back to this particular verse. I want to share with you what this particular uh, Bible uh, says, uh, let me get there. Uh, went a little too far there. Psalm, 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 Psalm. Went through there. Back this way. Back this way. Second King. Yeah. Oh, they don't have it named Psalms. <laughs> yes, it, they do. I mean, I was just there. I was just in Psalms. You didn't mark it? Uh, no, I didn't, but um, mm -hmm. but we're going to get there. <laughs> Psalm 19. What verse is that again? Uh I'm there. 35. Psalms 119. I just don't know which one you're going to address. Yeah, 119. 119. 30. Oh, yeah, here it is. <clears throat> well, I started uh, the 36. He says, bend my heart toward your instructions and not toward selfish gain. Bend my heart, work with my heart, work with my work with it so that and bend it towards your instruction. That's what I'm have a, a, a propensity to be or to do your word and not toward selfish gain. Mm -hmm. I knew it was something mm -hmm. that stood out when I read that. And that takes discipline. Oh, uh, my goodness. Yeah, it takes discipline. And yeah, it, it, it takes discipline. This is something that it must be worked at. And the reason is because you have been living a great majority of your life according to your five senses, what you see here and everything. So now here you are learning a new way of living mm -hmm. according to God's word. <clears throat> and it takes discipline because this flesh and sometimes yes. our environment mm -hmm. wants to bend us back to the seats yeah, of the world. Want to bend it right back in that flesh. <clears throat> and it's the soul, that middle 
Yes. That middle man right there is probably the most challenging too, because that one has to agree with the spirit. It has to. It has to agree with it. Has to. Yeah. Has to. All right. This says, incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness or, as I said, selfish gain. He says, turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity or uselessness. And quicken or energize thou me in thy way. Let me get motivated about your way, God. The useless stuff, the stuff that is not going to benefit me. Because it's vanity. It's useless. <laughs> it's yes. really vanity. <laughs> yes, it is. He says, turn away my eyes from even seeing it or looking at it. Just tur turn, turn my head from, and then he says, and energize me or make me alive or quicken thou me in thy way. He says, establish or establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear or thy respect and honor. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me or make me alive or energize me in thy righteousness. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, so that is one particular stanza or as you mentioned, division. We'll say, no, no, the chapter would be a uh, division. Oh, the that, chapter. So you, stanza, I guess, would be for the verse, huh? Yes. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next one, which is uh, in my Bible, it begins the alphabet V, V A U. I won't even try to pronounce it, but let's begin at the 41st verse. He says, Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. Salvation in the Greek, it means. Uh, so uh, it, it, the, the word is soteria, which means safety, preservation, and soundness. And I'm pretty sure the Greek rendering of that is pretty close to that as well. So if you can imagine, let thy mercies <clears throat> come also unto me, O Lord, even thy safety, preservation, and soundness, according to thy word. Mm -hmm. I'm taken to, uh, what, isn't it 120 Psalm where it talks about how a hen covers the 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 chicks, mm -hmm. the the baby uh, chickens or whatever. How he he covers us with his wings. That's their salvation. Yeah, that's their salvation because I can remember as a young man when my grandmother she had chickens and after the uh, the babies would hatch uh, from the eggs and everything. There'd be a lot of times that we would be chasing them, trying to catch them and everything. And what they would do is run toward their mother and the mother would squat down and spread her wings out and they would go under and then she would do this number. Mm -hmm. So if we were to reach, she would peck us. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's the protection. That was their salvation. That was their protection and everything. He says, let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord even thy salvation, according to thy word. He says, so shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me. Someone that comes to me and he wants to uh, reproach me or he wants to, uh, for lack of a better term, pluck my nerves or he wants to, you know, his, his, his motivations are nefarious. They are, uh, are not good. He says, for I trust in thy word. That's, that's where my trust is. He says, and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in thy judgment. He says, so shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. And I will walk in freedom or liberty for I seek thy precepts. You know, when we're seeking God, walking in his word, there's freedom there. Mm -hmm. there, 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 is, there. There's freedom. We're not bound to, to anything. Matter of fact, the reason why we are walking in his precepts or walking in his word, because we've delighted in his word mm -hmm. 
And we are expressing our freedom mm -hmm. because it's something that we want to do. It's something that we long to do, something we enjoy in doing. And that is pursuing his precepts and walking in them and keeping them because we enjoy it. Yeah, we enjoy it. <laughs> we enjoy it. He goes on to say 46 verse. He says, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. He said, I'm going to testify about you, mm -hmm. testify your goodness, how you protected me and how you kept me. Now, we know in the book of Revelation, it talks about how they overcame by the words of their testimony. Mm -hmm. And a testimony is what you personally know yourself based upon your own experience. Nobody can doubt your own. They can doubt it if they want to, mm -hmm. but you got your own experience. Yeah. What is your testimony? <laughs> mm -hmm. What is what is your truth? What can you testify about to truth that he's like? What do you know about him? But let's go on here. 47 verse. He says, and I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved. And I will meditate, going back to what we looked at before. And again, my working definition for meditate when it comes to God's word, seeing God's word accomplish that what it has already said, it can and will accomplish where you are visualizing it in your own mind of it completing what it says it can complete. He says, I will meditate in thy statutes. Now we're going on to another stanza. He says, remember the word unto thy servant, which thou hast caused me to hope. He says, this is my comfort in my affliction. The word that has caused me to hope. You mean to tell me that this word can cause me to look forward to something? Amazing. That, that is awesome. He says, remember the word unto thy servant, which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction. He says, for thy word hath quickened me or energized me or made me alive. You know, the enemy would love to afflict us with negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. He, he, he afflicts the people of God with negative thoughts. Again, we can go all the way back to Genesis. We can look and see what the conversation he had with Eve. He was afflicting her with negative thoughts. And being that he did it to her, he does it to everybody. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that last week. Because, um, you know, before Adam sinned, God had access totally to him. You mm -hmm. know, he was communing with God and all. But yes, he was. But as soon as he messed up and obeyed Satan and he was separated in that disconnection right there, if you remember how Satan had to talk to him out in the in the world, I mean, in the, in the earth, because mm -hmm. he had to enter through a snake on the outside. But then he gave him permission to be able to talk and hear in the soul. You ever thought about that? Nope. I was thinking. I was thinking about that all last week. No. Nope. How now, man, the, you know, has that influence in here now, mm -hmm. in the soul area. But if you remember, the serpent talked outside at first. As in, like we are now. Yeah, he had to come out this from this angle. But then, once he gave him permission, he became his ruler. He entered there. And so now that influence is right there. So when we get born again, we have the Holy Spirit there. But then if you notice, the enemy still is giving his influence. And that's why we have to put on the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. Yes, the helmet of salvation. Yeah. Yes, the so, helmet of salvation. Yeah. That helps us with the soteria, mm -hmm. the safety, the preservation of soundness as we remember this yeah. word. So when Adam declared independence... <laughs> It opened up that see, door for it to be see, right in there. Now, indeed, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so I, I was thinking about that uh, last week. Uh, well, you know, I sometimes meditate on something. I wonder how this happened. Yes. All right. 50th verse, he says, This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me or made me alive or energized me. He says, The proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I've had to deal with some proud folks. I had to deal with their rhetoric. I had to deal with what they were saying. I had to deal with them trying to convince me that that what I'm standing on, the precepts, the word of God, the standard of God, and all of this that I'm living by, they had they, they came to me and tried to talk me down, so to say. Yet I have not declined from thy word. Mm -hmm. I've kept it. I've kept your word. I've kept your standard. Even in the midst, of all of that. And that is how he works mm -hmm. sometimes. 52nd verse says, I remember thy, thy judgments of, of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. It is so good. You know, just, just reflecting on this, it would do us well as believers that we would read and see God's history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that I have learned in investments a, a, a great telltale sign to see if this this firm or whomever you're going to invest with or put your money in, what's their record? How, how has how has they how you know their performance over a certain period of time? Look at their you know not what they prospect to do mm -hmm. in the future, but how have they performed in the past? And if they have done well, mm -hmm. most likely they're going to do well continually. And you think about it, that's why God left the word, because he tried to establish a record. So A record, <laughs> yes. So he could come and read about what he did with Hannah and uh, what he did with Abraham, yes. Isaac, and Jacob. And, and we can read the record. We, we have the record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have the record. Yeah. I mean, of what he has done. So therefore, we should have the mindset. He's good. Yeah. He, he, he told me if I stand on his word, then he's going to come through. That God is faithful. Hey, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, David had some incidents. And he, watch this. Even though he messed up, but God was able to restore him. That's yes. the record. That's the record. That right. is the record. <laughs> that is the record. That's the record. He said, I remember thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. This is what it should do. It should give us comfort. It should give us comfort comfort you know again we always or not we always but a lot of times in messages you all uh, you you hear about uh the three hebrew boys uh you hear about um who else daniel and the lion's den um who else do you hear about uh the walls of jericho about him breaking down walls um there's some other ones uh that you hear about a lot of times are used as object lessons in messages and all. And again, they're recalling that because of God's record mm -hmm. of what he has done. And, and you know what? If When you read the uh, story of Isaac, um, Jacob, they always talk about the father, the God of my father. But then, you know, though they knew the God of my father, God always gave them their own experience. Yes. He always gave them their own, own experience. experience. <laughs> now, how, how important is it for one to have their own experience? It's, it's, you need it, don't you? In order for really, I mean, all that other stuff is just mental assessment. Mm -hmm. It's like mom said, God, I trust in God. But then there come a time when you, you have to know God for yourself because mom going to be gone. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to need to trust God for yourself. And trust me, the enemy is going to come for you sometime. You are not escaping the earth without a test. And and I think every parent would want to be able to have their child to grow up in a culture, grow up in a society, where they don't have to experience the things that the parent experienced. Mm -hmm. Make it easier for them. Yeah. They don't want to see their child suffer uh, or, or have to deal with some of the things. But 
we can take comfort in knowing when you implant that word in them, mm -hmm. that it's there and that it will keep them because of God's record. Mm -hmm. Like our children, they have a record of what God has done for our family mm -hmm. and he's able to do it for theirs. Yes. So they, they have a record, they have a precedent, they know amen, the capabilities of God and his word, not only based upon the word, but also the testimony, our testimony, and what they have seen us experience in life and how God has brought us out. And trust me, they will have their own experience, but you have to give them tools, equip them. There you go, you hit the nail yeah. on the that's, head. That's what has to happen. You know, I've, I've learned over the years that everybody don't, like if you're going through, uh, you know, the importance of the word of God. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because to try to get somebody to see, listen, if you, you haven't grabbed hold of this, this is what you need. You got to learn how to delight in the word. You got to learn how to lean on the word. This is what's going to get you through. And for some reason, man has this tendency of trying to find substitute things. You know, we, you know, we want to go to prayer and that's it. But I don't want to read my Bible. We want to go to fasting. And, and uh, going back to what you're saying, go to prayer rather than read my Bible. That mm -hmm. sounds good. That's e it, it's easy when I can ask somebody to pray for me because I ain't got to put too much work in it. Right. So, <laughs> so. So now that point is the laziness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you even find some will just will spend a whole lot of time in prayer. prayer. They are spend days for prayer. But at the same time, they're real low on the word. Then you find some that are into fasting. They'll put years into fasting or days into fasting. And this they they're thinking this is the remedy for my problem. But as we can see to through what we're saying here, it's the word of God that is you gotta put that first. So prayer and fasting has its place. It has it's an immediate thing. It has its place. Yeah. But it will never usurp or put itself or be above actually studying and knowing the word, the word of God. God. Yeah. And that is a, a deception. And the enemy love for you to not value the book because this is kryptonite to him. You know, he would love for you to just, if I can keep you shouting, you know. You and know, shouting <laughs> has its place. And it's a good thing. But but if I can get you to, that's the only reason you want to go to church is to shout. And when it comes down to the word, you want to go out in the back and not hear this, then I got you right when I want them, right, right where I want you. So... There's a lot of things that we as believers do to substitute from our, laz our laziness of getting into this, a daily mm. routine. You, you, you indeed young. 53rd verse, I want to read it out of my uh, complete Jewish study Bible. The 53rd uh, verse, it says, uh, Fury seizes me when I think of the wicked because they abandon your Torah, what it says here, but abandon your law. King James Version said, horror have taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Said, I get upset about it. I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. I, I feel a certain way. Uh, it, and it just comes all upon me because of the wicked that forsake your law. I'll even go one step further. For the ones who get caught up in apostasy and fall away. Paul told us this is going to happen. Jesus told us that people are going to fall away. He even talked about a, a great falling away is going to take place so that son of perdition can be revealed so that we can see his tricks. And what I am seeing in my lifetime is that people that were for what we refer to our Christian ease, saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost field, mm -hmm. turning their backs on God, denouncing their faith, or as, as uh, Charles shared with me, uh, the, one of the telltale signs is deconstructing my faith. What is so wrong <laughs> what, what, with, with this, this, this belief that we have, that you have to give it a look over? It was good enough for you to obey it and it and you were saved by it. Mm -hmm. So why now do you need to deconstruct it or look at back at it as if 
something is lacking or missing. It seems as if uh, that person foundation was not on the rock. So when the wind blew, blew <laughs> and the different dynamics came for it, uh -huh. it failed. It failed. Yeah, it failed. But let's go on. He says, it, it, I feel a certain way. <laughs> it takes hold of me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. 54th verse, he says, thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage, my travels, my, my growth process, my going from point A to point B. It, it's, he says, thy statutes, going back to the word, have been my songs. I even sing about it. I even make melodies in my heart about your word. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night and have kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. I've kept them. Now I'm going on to the next alphabet, C-H-E-T-H. -H. He says, thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. One of the things, amen, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've spoken this and talked about this. I grew up in a single parent home. Uh, my mother, she was responsible for raising me. And one of the things that she taught me is that you're only as good as your word. Mm -hmm. you're, on, you're only as good as your word. And I've taught my sons especially that as well. Taught them to be young men of honor, respect, and, you know, be a man of your word. And he says here, thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy word. When you make a statement like that, God is expecting for you to keep it. Because mm -hmm. he's going to keep his. Yeah. And you think about it when some, someone choose to stand, stand by their word. That comes from the heart. So if you're going to be a liar, that, that's stemming from what your heart is. Yes. Because mm -hmm. that means I, I can, I'm not, I'm going to give you false words. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're right? Yes. Yeah. And even, you know, God himself wants us to be truthful with him. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be truthful with him. He says, 58th verse says, I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimony. It seems as though he, he said, I, I thought on my ways. I had to make a, you know, a direction change. Mm -hmm. My ways were not right. Mm -hmm. That's a hard thing for some folks. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they don't even want to know. Yeah. They don't even want to know they twisted, huh? It's like, they don't, I don't want to know. Want to know. <laughs> don't tell me. No. You don't know, tell me. You think about it with the children of Israel, with those prophets <laughs> would prophesy to them. They killed somebody. Yeah, they don't want to hear that. <laughs> they go before the king. The king is like, kill them. <laughs> yeah. like, they, did, they did not want to hear it. And then some people, they do not want to hear it. What do they do? Turn off the TV, turn off the radio, mm -hmm. whatever conduit the word is coming through. And matter of fact, they won't even come to church. But they will, you know, as as Paul told, you know, Timothy, uh, they will find some, you know, with itching ears mm -hmm. who will be able to satisfy them. And you think about doing this season here. A lot of churches are online. This really shows you up. Because if you can't sit at home. Oh, my goodness. And tune in for an hour or whatever to hear the word of God. Something is really wrong. <laughs> but watch Desperate, I mean, not Desperate Housewives, but with the Housewives House of, of Atlanta, yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't they have... And, and can go that marathon, a marathon on some, one, some of those shows or some series that they have. If you can't tune in to hear the word and it's at home, something is really wrong. Because you know, when you at church, people come up with excuses. You know, I had to take the dog to the vet. And I had to... <laughs> I had to go to the doctor and my child is blah, 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 blah. And, you know, giving all kind of excuses for why they didn't show up, right? But now you at home, you still ain't watching nothing. All right, Pastor, move on. No. <laughs> so, you know, next month is Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some they're going to do like, uh, I'm pretty sure, they're going to do like uh, the the uh, the marathon, the Cosby show. Uh, just, just something. 
It's a marathon, right? <laughs> Star Wars, all the movies from Star Wars. I'm gonna watch each that. one of those movies about three hours long. Yeah, they will spend that time. But say, <laughs> are you tuning in to Bible study? Uh, I had to do. No, they got it where you can go back and watch it. You can go back and watch it. But they'll know what this does. It exposes the heart. Yes, it does. It exposes your true heart. It does. It does. It exposes the heart. Sixth verse, he says, I made haste and delayed not to keep that command. He said, I was quick to do it. I didn't put up any excuses, no barriers. He said, I made haste. Now, again, a lot of times people don't understand it. But again, I can remember growing up when my mother wanted something and she wanted it then. Her turn would make haste and get here. <laughs> and, and she meant it too because I knew if I did not have it there to her quickly, I knew what was happening. You think Bundell would survive that? No. <laughs> would not. No. 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 <laughs> No. <laughs> Say that Bundell is pretty slow. No. Go get this. No. You might as well go get it yourself. <laughs> because uh, there have been many a times, especially back when I grew up, Saturday morning cartoons, <laughs> and she would tell me to go get something or to do something, and I would be so locked into the cartoons and everything. And then this, this is the worst thing. <laughs> I would go, and I forget what she said, and I would come back. I said, Mother, what did you tell me to do? I ain't telling you. Make haste. <laughs> I'm like, come on, throw me a bone. Help me out here. I'm struggling. I need some help. I'm drowning. Your extra sister. <laughs> no, she was there. She was not going to help me either. <clears throat> but yes, he says, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me. But I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. He says, I am a companion of all them that fear, honor, respect thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. You know, one of the things is great is that we are not alone. Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes some situations, we may seem like we are alone, but we are not alone. There are other people that are living for the Lord. There are other people that love God, love his word. And gr the great thing about God is that sometimes on job situations, he'll bring us together. Mm -hmm. And we can fellowship with one another, strengthen one another, share testimonies, and just do those things that will help each other. And man, if I had the, you know, I've had the opportunity in uh, my work, amen, to work with other ministers of the gospel, other preachers. And, and I mean, once they, uh, one time they saw the three of us and they said, oh, there's a conclave. <laughs> what? A what? A conclave? Yeah, they would say the, con <laughs> the conclave of pastors. Oh, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I bet that was funny. <laughs> yes. It says, The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we can really, really say. Even though the enemy, he has destructive tendencies to steal, kill, and destroy, we can yet then see God's mercy active. And working in the earth realm. You know, when you uh, really see, because there come a point after you start loving the word where you see where the enemy has really twisted this thing. <laughs> and when you see it, yeah, when you are illuminated, yeah, it changes a whole lot of things. Yeah. And you don't want to be like 80 years old finding out, oh, he's really twisted it. <laughs> but if you can get it in your youth or in exactly. your prime time, it would be wonderful. And, the, you know, all the tricks that the enemy, uh, the pits fall for man that he has come up with. But God has really made a way for 
his man to win in life. I come that you might have life mm -hmm. and that more abundantly. Amen. Amen. So now we're going on to the 65th verse, I believe, amen, where we left off or at the beginning. He says, Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word. Meaning that you've dealt fairly with me, your word. You've done what you said you would do according to your word. He says, Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have, uh, for I have believed believed as in past me, thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. I was afflicted with what? I was afflicted with ignorance. <laughs> I was afflicted with darkness. Mm -hmm. And it could have been some physical afflictness or whatever. It could have been something that served as a deterrent or to deter one away. Because, you know, uh, some things, you know, can deter a person mm -hmm. from God. It says here, I was afflicted. Uh, he says, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Now, I, if this is if this is referring to David, if he really is a true author, mm -hmm. he did go off. I was afflicted. I went. <laughs> I got. I got kind of caught up in my lust. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And I went off. Yes, that and that is so true. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, not only is that just how should I say for David, but for all mm -hmm. as well. For, for all as well. He says, thou art good and doest good. He says, teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me and I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, <laughs> but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. Now see, I was listening to a series. I can't remember it right now, but Tony Evans was talking about the benefits, for lack of a better term, of afflictions. Mm -hmm. Just like he said, if I had not been afflicted, mm -hmm. if I had not been troubled, I would not have known that God is a keeper of his word. Mm -hmm. I ran to the word, find out what it said. I put my trust in it and he performed his word. And sometimes when you get afflicted, you're a little scared. And uh, mm -hmm. that's why it's always good to, if you can, you know, get with a prayer partner or somebody that's a little stronger. Uh, because usually uh, there is a, one is, is a little weak. Yes. Afflicted yes. in a situation. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. Uh, what is that? Uh, uh, like afflicted that I might learn. I said 72. He says, the law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. That's putting God's word above and beyond riches and everything else. Mm -hmm. Putting it above and beyond. And, and you know, there was a time when uh, the, the church was running after prosperity where they were putting them gold and riches ahead of God, uh, of his word. But it seems like now during this, now it's come to a point of leveling off where you can, people have become into a revelation that we got kind of a little bit to the left there. <laughs> now we have to balance this thing. Yes, have to balance it out. He says, thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in thy word. He says, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right and that thou in faithfulness hath afflicted me. One of the things it would do us well to understand that and know God's judgments or his call on the matter is right. Mm -hmm. I think there's a scripture that says, let uh, let God be true and every man a liar. God's, God is always right. His call on every situation, it is right. All right, let's go on here. Uh, hmm, what do I say? <laughs> uh, Thy hands has made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding 
that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in, in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thou judgments are right and that thou in faithfulness hath afflicted me. Yet let, I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant. Let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live for thy law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dwelt perversely with me without a cause. But I will meditate in thy precepts. I mean, even in accusations, even when being dealt the raw side or the wrong hand, it says here, I'm going to yet meditate in thy precepts, in thy word. Let those that fear thee, honor thee, turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimony. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. Going on to the next stanza. My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Mine eyes fail for thy word, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. He's saying he can't see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I can't see. I, I don't. It's, I, I don't know which way to go. And we've all been there. <laughs> Amen. He says, how many are the days of thy servant? When wilt thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? That really points to not being able to see. Mm -hmm. Not physically see, but I'm saying just not being able to see the end result. Yeah. Of what well, he, he can't physically, probably can't physically see either. <laughs> that's possible see, too. You know, and that's what makes things kind of uncomfortable because we can't see. The end. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> He says, the proud have digged pits for me, which are not after thy law. He says, all thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me, help me. He says, they had almost consumed me upon the earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. Quicken me, energize me after thy loving kindness. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. Going on to the next one. He says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever. Your word is settled. Mm -hmm. Forever. Yes. It is settled in heaven. He says, thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Saying it, it is, it is to all generations, meaning that he's ready, willing, and able to show his faithfulness to every generation. He says, thou hast established the earth and it abideth. Mm -hmm. He has established the earth and it abideth. I, I, I often, from time to time, you know, think about how God has sustained the earth and everything therein. <clears throat> Especially when I watch the shows, when they're talking about the salmon, how they migrate and they make their way back into the breeding grounds and all this other stuff like that. What I find particularly interesting to me that it has been going on every year since I've been alive and it was going on before I got here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I say that, the Salmons making their way back up in Alaska and those places making their way, you know, they go out to sea and they come back and they lay their eggs and all this and that. And what they do is they provide food for the bears who are getting ready to go and hibernate. Mm -hmm. And it amazes me how God works that out. And we can think of, I mean, just other things that he does as well in sustaining the earth. It's, it's, it's awesome too. I think it's, a, uh, when I think about God establishing, because he says here, thou hast established the earth and it abides. You think about it, being he's God, he's the king, he's his yeah. property. He has set laws and boundaries. Yes. And he's established it, and it, it's there, and we have to abide by them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can think about it, in order for the earth to continue on, his laws and his ways had to uh, be still in place. Amen. Because they're established. Yes, they're established. <laughs> they're established. Yep. 91st verse, he said, They continue this day according 
uh, to thine ordinances, mm -hmm. for all are thy servants. Unless thy law had been my delights, I should, uh, should then have per, uh, perished in mine affliction. He said, I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. Going on to the next one, he's 97. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies. You know, God's word will make you wise. Mm -hmm. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I understand more than the old folks. Why? Because of what your word has said and that's what I study. Mm -hmm. And I got wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like one of the things you see, you've always said, ain't no fool like an old fool. <laughs> That's the worst right there. It's just because you're expecting more out of there, right? Yeah. And when you get older, you expect more out of that older one. But me, the, me the old fool. That one's. It's not pretty. <laughs> but you know what I've learned about wisdom? <laughs> wisdom. Wisdom comes with. The precepts, when you study God's word, yes, it seems to come with it, doesn't it? It does. It it does. It does. It it does. And then sometimes you, <clears throat> sometimes I do something, I have to go, man, that was really good. <laughs> that was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and it's not you, and you know you you can't do it. And you yeah. know that wisdom had to have come from God. I had to, because had to. you abide in Him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he said, "I understand more than the angels because I keep Thy precepts. I have refrained my feet." from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are the words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. I mean, this, this, this expression of hating every false way, it seems to me that this is someone who is fully committed. Mm -hmm. I mean, sold out, <laughs> sold out, love God, love his word, mm -hmm. constantly working on himself to walk in the precepts, being patient with himself, walking, learn all of these things. He says, thy word, next stanza uh, for N-U-N, he says, 105th verse, he says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. This is one scripture that we all are familiar with, mm -hmm. at least in church. We've read this and heard this used in messages. He says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, to help you understand that, if you can visualize the world in sin and it's in darkness, in ignorance, the word is light or illumination. So it says, the word is a lamp or a way that I can light up my way of living, mm -hmm. my path in life. He says, lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I know how important it is for you to have light when walking a path. Even though you have walked a path in the daytime when it is light, I mean, many, many, many times. And at night, you really need a light mm -hmm. to walk that path because something could have changed. Something could have changed. Case in point, back where I'm from, where I grew up, you know, when you, we didn't always have a, a, an in-house bathroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had an outhouse. And it was away from the house. So when you had to go, you went, you know, to the to the outhouse. Did you go by yourself, or you had to, did you send somebody with you? <laughs> I mean, when it's at night. 
Oh, in the nighttime? I mean, because we well, had we had toilets in our house. <laughs> Just saying. We had well, we you know for the night we had a pot that we put under the bed. Oh, okay. But there was sometimes <laughs> in which you know you got that time right between you know where the sun is going down. Oh, okay. Let's say you know still light out there, mm -hmm. and you go down to, to the pad. You go oh, down okay. the path. And then, you know, you come back sometimes, it got a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. And you need light to help you. Because sometimes a snake could be in the past. <laughs> so, so go ahead, country. <laughs> go ahead. A light unto my path. He said, a light unto my path. 106 says, I have sworn and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgment. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy word. Encourage me, build me up, get me back motivated according to thy word. Because I'm dealing with these things, some things. He says, accept, accept. I beseech thee the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, my mouth. O oh Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul uh, is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined or bent my heart my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. That's what I've done with my heart. I've bent it towards mm -hmm. God's word to perform it, to do it, to walk in his statutes. Because I want the promises of God. I want them fulfilled in my life. And just to be honest, the promises are for those who will walk in his word. Mm -hmm. You oftentimes think of someone for uh, years, let's say since they was in uh, elementary school, middle school, and they bent their heart toward the world. Mm -hmm. One of the hardest things that I've watched from growing up in church was that, that kid that did bend their heart toward the world and they grew past high school and got in college and they just wanted that world to bend that back. Takes an extra effort. Yes, yes. And you don't see it all the time. I will say that. When they in their youth and they bend it that way, mm -hmm. they don't see it all the time. It's 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 uh it's it's possible. But yes, it's, it is possible. It's possible. But when you bend that thing to the world and you want that, yeah. Yeah. I've inclined my heart to perform that statute all the way, even until the end. We're going to go ahead and end it right here. We'd like to thank you for joining us for our weekly Bible study here at Living Epistle Facebook Live. Amen. From 7.30 to 8.30, we'll be back next week to continue and make our way through Psalms 119. And we'd like to just thank you and remind you of next week. And also just to remind you of our Sunday morning worship service again here on Living Epistle Facebook Live. So come and join us. And if you will, amen, we'd love for you to share our link with someone else so that they can see and be a part of our worship experience as well as our Bible study. And God bless you, and we will see you next time.